Last year, we closed on this property, the Peerless Mill in Rossville, Georgia, 29 buildings at the same time. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through the one and a half million square feet that we have here and give you some updates on this project. So if you're new to the channel or don't know much about Peerless Mill, it was at one time the largest wool factory in the United States, employing over 3,000 people. It was so large, it actually had its own semi-pro baseball and basketball teams. And it's really the heart of Rossville, Georgia. This was a mill town, so the entire town was built around this property. So the 32 acre site has 29 buildings on it. Pretty big to take down if you're gonna do the entire thing all at once but we like to take the elephant bite by bite. So today I'm gonna to walk you through a few more of the buildings that we have available now for lease and why we chose those buildings and how we're going about building those out and finishing them for occupancy. The coolest part about all of this is that all of these little nooks, crannies, things like that, once the space gets up and running, I mean, this could be a really cool outdoor patio area, beer garden, there's so much room for activities. Keep out, unless you're renting space. So this is building 21. This is the first building that we're gonna be tackling because it has high visibility on McFarland Avenue right here, a large parking lot out front. And for self-storage, it's perfect. We've already got two loading docks, a ramp to get inside, two double doors. It really just lends itself perfectly to that. So even though the property is really old, all of these buildings were built really well. So you can see we have concrete block walls. We have this steel frame here holding up the structure. Self-storage is a relatively inexpensive build out, right? It's one of the cheapest industrial uses that you can use that actually has a very high demand depending on where you are. Well, in this area, we did all the research. Self-storage is definitely underserved in the area. So it's gonna be a very easy first delivery for us to do. And we can actually do that on our own. We don't have to wait for a tenant to come in and sign a lease, build the space out. We can build this out ourselves and kick off the self-storage program. In terms of the intensity of the build-out, it's relatively easy compared to some of the other uses that we will have on this site. All right, now that y'all have seen Building 21 and our plans for this one, let's go look at Building 3 on the other side of the property, which is also in relatively similar shape and pretty much there for a tenant to move in. So we're here at Building 3, which is right across the parking lot from Amigos. It's actually split into two separate spaces, both about 3,000 square feet each. You can see they've got taller ceilings, concrete floors, beautiful windows with natural light, couple of roll-up doors so you can either open those up, turn them into glass garage doors, or use them for more industrial you know, delivery type uses. And you can actually blow this wall out because it's not structural and combine the two spaces together for one 6,000 square foot space. So you can probably tell that building three is relatively move-in ready. It's broom swept, it's clean, it's already got power coming to the space. There's a couple of different spots for plumbing and sewer. And that's really how you take down a project of this size and scale. I know building 21 needs a lot more work, right? We're gonna be replacing the roof, doing all MEP, but we looked at what are the easiest buildings to fill first. Let's get tenants in there, we'll get them cash flowing, and then we'll use those funds to build out the next space, lease that out to a tenant, maybe then we'll refinance, pull some cash out of the property and use that to invest in the next space. And that's really how you snowball a project of this size and take it from a 29 building, you know, daunting task into a building by building at a time kind of deal. So I wanna show you just for scale where, where we were. I incorrectly called building 24, building 21 earlier, but 24 is actually where we were walking through talking about self storage. Then we came over here to building three and now we're in building two. We created this sitemap so that whenever there's groups coming on site to do video shoots, photo shoots, whatever, the team can drop in and get a very quick overview of which buildings they can and can't shoot in and where they should be going because you can see the property is pretty massive. Okay, so now we're gonna walk back to building 24, this time from the inside of the property because we've got another space that's just below where we're putting self-storage that is readily move-in available. So we're here on the ground floor of building 24. You can see it's got a very wide open floor plan, nice column spacing, exposed brick walls, taller ceilings, and all of these windows, which are currently boarded up that could be open to bring in an immense amount of natural light into the space. It's just a wonderful space for me to kind of drop in because it's right in the center of the property. 
and uh, opens out into this courtyard. So it'll make a great tenant space one day. I bought the truck for this project because um, I figured if I was going to be working on an old mill, I'd have to have an old work truck to be driving around out here on because my Tesla, not really good for carrying tools around. And I uh, found this on Craigslist not far from here and it was in great shape. Uh, I just, I love the color. So one day I'm, I'm planning on, on refinishing the exterior, getting the old Peerless Mill logo put back on the side of it and uh, keeping it around for a while. Okay, so now we're driving over to building 28, which is a really neat building. It stands on its own on the north side of the property. Pretty sure that we've actually got a lease pending on this one uh, because it is pretty much ready to go, but I wanna show it to you guys anyway. What the hell? That is not supposed to be locked. <laughs> the fun joys of owning big properties. Fence locked, no bolt cutters. What are we gonna do? And then it's a wide shot of your Tesla crashing through the fence. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Mission Impossible. Oh. While Zach is slacking and struggling to get through the fence, I'm gonna struggle with the gimbal and not do it right, but check out the water tower. <laughs> This building, standalone, fenced in, obviously very protected. No vehicles in or out. The nice thing is it's got this massive parking lot so that no matter what kind of uh, industry you're in, you can park a bunch of vehicles here. You can have some outdoor storage. We're standing here in the cross dock bay. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cross docks, which is pretty nice. So if you've got trucks that are coming in, you need to unload from one truck to another. You can actually do it all right here without having to go through another warehouse or move your truck. But it's a great little flex space because you can walk right out of the office into this area. Let's go to the back and check out the drive through. You've got two doors on either end so you can pull a truck all the way through pretty nice when it's raining or if you need to work on your trucks you can see that there's actually a little area right here to get underneath the trucks so as i said before we walked in the space we've got this really large parking lot here which is pretty nice if you're going to be getting deliveries you got plenty of room to turn around you've got exterior ramps as well so that if you get somebody on a box truck that maybe can't fit the loading dock, they can unload here and you can roll it up into the loading dock it's just always nice to have options right and while that's kind of the end of our available buildings for the tour, I'm gonna to show you all some of my favorite spaces in the property that will be available coming soon that I just think are pretty mind blowing. This was pretty fun. A couple of weeks ago, we had this massive storm blow through. It actually hit Nashville too, it was crazy. The storm blew through and completely peeled back this roof. We had to come in and fix that because we have a tenant operating out of one half and the other half is coming available soon for lease. But one thing I will add to that is that we were prepared for an expense like this to happen. You have to keep that in mind whenever you're taking down any property, be incredibly conservative with your numbers, make sure you have a healthy CapEx budget so that if anything like this does arise, you've got a plan to get it figured out. And you know, as a commercial landlord, you wanna keep your tenants happy, right? They pay you rent. And uh, we wanna make sure that rent keeps flowing. So this is the third floor next to the building that has Prater's flooring in it. This is one of my favorite spots because the natural light that comes in, the way that these columns were constructed, you can see the kind of mushroom at the top. It's not really done as much anymore. And then of course you have this subway tile on all of the walls. So I can see this becoming creative office space, some sort of apartment loft living if we can figure out the natural light towards the back. But we do have a freight elevator in here as well. So it could end up being something industrial too. All right, now let's go look at some of the more interesting features of Peerless Mill. There's an entire underground space available in this site. And uh, I don't know, you just gotta see it. So we've looked at using this for underground parking. At some point, it actually kind of was utilized for that. And it would be nice to keep it here on the property. Uh, but there are plenty of other uses that we could use this underground space for. You know, some things that I've thought that would be really neat would be archery range, a shooting range, maybe even some underground laser tag, you know, something really cool that doesn't need natural light that would still be a huge value add for the property and for the community. So our 10 year vision for the property includes an outdoor amphitheater for music events, community events, whatever that will occupy this parking lot right here. We have a couple of different uses that we'll probably be utilizing on this site until then, um, which could include Airbnb units, could be RV and boat storage. There's a few different things that we're kind of exploring at the moment, but I am from Nashville. I love music venues 
and I love unique underground music venues even more. So this next space that I'm gonna show you really is reminiscent to me of like the basement in Nashville. Um, could have some super unique shows there. So this is pretty neat. There's a, a ramp over here that's covered. So it could be a good like load in, load out. How cool would this be as an event venue, right? You kind of have your bar over here, you've got your restrooms over to the side, you've got your main stage in the back, and you've just got this kind of tight, you know, closed in, uh, good feeling kind of set for a band to roll through the Chattanooga area and play a show. All right, so there you have it for today's tour of the Peerless Mill. As you can see, we're taking it down bite by bite, building by building. If you wanna check out some of the other spaces that we have toured before on a previous vlog, check out this video here.